You probably won't believe it, but there is a fact that Elon Musk, the CEO of four big companies at the same time, has been missing deadlines since he was a kid. Fans of his space company that has been following development of SpaceX's next generation rocket are now used to the first orbital launch milestone being postponed multiple times. However, looking at how SpaceX is rushing testing Booster 7 and Ship 24, Elon Musk's latest milestone for Starship is probably no longer an empty promise. Welcome back to Alpha Tech. We'd like to take time to thank you for your continued support of the channel. Now let's take a seat and we'll expose everything on this topic in today's episode. As Elon Musk says repeatedly, he created a rocket company because he wants to colonize Mars. His fervent argument is that humanity must spread to another planet as insurance for long-term survival. Starship, a giant rocket, is the centerpiece of his ambition. The ship with the Super Heavy Booster is essentially a rocket as powerful as Saturn V, which took NASA's Apollo astronauts to the moon 50 years ago, but it's fully reusable. For Apollo, everything but the small capsule on top where the astronauts sat was discarded along the way, and even the capsule could only be used once. While most rockets these days have more utilitarian appearances, SpaceX prototypes resemble something from an old sci-fi movie of the 1950s. In part, it's because it's in a rush to get the prototypes to the launch pad. SpaceX is not bothered with such aesthetic niceties as paint, but there's also good engineering reasons for the choice of material. Mr. Musk originally planned to use high-tech carbon fiber, but switched to stainless steel. Steel is heavier than carbon fiber and aluminum, another common material used for rocket, but it's also cheaper, about 2% the cost of carbon fiber, Mr. Musk has said, and it has a higher melting temperature that can more easily withstand the heat of re-entry back to Earth's atmosphere. But what's really exciting to many fans is the power of SpaceX's Raptor 2. The Raptor engine is a full-flow stage combustion cycle or FFSCC engine and it runs on super chill liquid oxygen and super chilled liquid methane CH4. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. The first stage, Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The second stage, Starship, currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. Elon Musk has noted that in the future the ship is likely to gain three more vacuum-optimized engines once they increase the length of the ship. Raptor 2's main combustion chamber, or MCC pressure, is astounding, 300 bar, up 50 bars from Raptor 1, the highest MCC pressure of any rocket engine ever. The previous record for the highest MCC pressure was the Russian RD-180, which runs at 267 bar pressure. Due to the wider throat and increased chamber pressure, Raptor has gained a significant amount of thrust. Raptor 2 produces 230 tons of thrust. For Booster 7 and its near-term successors, that means 33 new Raptor 2 engines capable of generating a total of about 7,600 metric tons. That's about 16.7 million foot-pounds of thrust. Experts say Starship is completely within the realm of the possible, without requiring impossible physics or unlikely technological leaps. Indeed, Starship employs ideas that were studied decades ago but never built. The biggest innovation is perhaps that SpaceX and Mr. Musk have applied the accelerated research and development approach of Silicon Valley. Build it fast, fix failures fast. So when will Starship take off? First publicly unveiled in September of 2016, this fully reusable next-generation rocket that eventually became today's stainless steel Starship was tentatively scheduled to begin an orbital flight test in 2020. About two years after that announcement, CEO Elon Musk unexpectedly sacrificed years of development work on Starship structures when he decided to replace the rocket's carbon fiber composite airframe with stainless steel. 
Years later, it's still hard to say if that decision was the right one, but Starship development has been surprisingly unperturbed by such an immense last-second design change. While Musk was saying almost the same thing 12 months ago, the CEO now believes that Starship's first orbital launch attempt could happen as early as next month or September 2022. Simultaneously, Musk believes that the first orbital launch attempt could be successful, although it's not entirely clear how he defines success. Less optimistically, his August 2nd tweet said SpaceX's first successful orbital Starship launch will probably occur between 1 and 12 months from now, and that also implies he wouldn't be surprised if it takes SpaceX a year and multiple attempts to achieve Starship's first successful orbital launch. It's even possible to interpret his tweet as a warning that Starship's first orbital launch, which is more likely to be successful, could be up to 12 months away. Somewhere in the middle, four to eight months from now, is a more reasonable bet for Starship's first successful orbital launch. Recently, SpaceX has rolled the latest version of the massive Super Heavy rocket back to the launch pad. Notably, as soon as Super Heavy Booster 7 is stable on the launch mount, SpaceX has activated a series of tests. Only on August 8th in the evening did SpaceX teams conduct two six-engine spin prime tests for Ship 24, two single-engine spin prime tests for Booster 7. Both vehicles got through them with no issues. After the last explosion of Booster 7, SpaceX now will only test the outer ring of 20 engines, not all. Despite that, the nature of this test is uncertain, and it can in all likelihood involve the company testing the Raptor engine's pumps. The pumps were also tested at the time of the accident, but while Booster 7 failed to make the cut, SpaceX's upper-stage Starship spacecraft that underwent the same test soon after the prior failure saw all the pumps performing to the mark. With a live feed from the test site showing showing clouds of gas flowing from below the rocket. Outside of Starship testing, SpaceX has also been aggressively refilling the Starbase Orbital Launch Site's massive tank farm, which is capable of storing, subcooling, and distributing thousands of tons of liquid oxygen, liquid methane, liquid nitrogen, and a variety of gases. For a full wet dress rehearsal, WDR, which has also never been done with Super Heavy, SpaceX would need to fill the booster with around 3,400 tons or 7.5 million pounds of propellant. Out of an abundance of caution, Super Heavy B-7 will likely have far less propellant aboard during almost all of its static fire tests. But a full static fire with a full load of propellant, simulating most pre-launch conditions, will likely be one of the last main goals of any static fire campaign. At full thrust, 33 Raptor 2 engines will likely burn around 25 tons or 55,000 pounds of propellant per second, so a huge amount of propellant will be needed regardless. SpaceX is definitely on the cusp of kicking off one of the most exciting and important test campaigns in the history of Starship. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section because your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.